podcast. Hell yeah, brother. Overload, brother. Beats by at Smoke M2D6. Welcome to a special episode of Seattle Overload where we're currently an unsigned free agent. And so it's going on my YouTube channel, but please do follow Griffin because. Griffin, we have massive Seahawks news uh, to react to. Seahawks yeah. quarterback Russell Wilson oh. traded. No longer Seahawks news. quarterback. <laughs> um, uh, so Seattle gets uh, quarterback Drew Locke, tight end Noah Fant, defensive lineman Shelby Harris, two first round picks, two second round picks, and a fifth round pick. Denver gets a fourth round pick and Russell Wilson. It's kind of like a crazy movie come to life. I don't, yeah. I don't really understand. It doesn't feel real still. Uh, I'm buzzing uh, through sort of nervous energy and caffeine. It's currently 3.20 a.m. Griff, first reactions, how did you find out? Thoughts? Um, first reaction was, uh, like, you know, read the tweets and just, I saw Schefter's tweet first and I just kept, like tapping on his profile and making like double checking to make sure the M wasn't an A an R N or like the, the E and Schefter wasn't a three. Like I quadruple checked it. The first time I saw it, I thought that's fake. And then I saw it again <laughs> or, you know, like blink my eyes and then like, it looks real. And then I thought I saw something in the profile. It looked weird. Like, Oh no, it's fake. And then I quickly realized it was really like, all that happened in like a split second. But um, when I saw it was real, I just, I for the longest time I had been a believer that Wilson did not want out. And then some stuff had come to light a couple of weeks ago. I'm not claiming credit for anything like sources, but something occurred that made me think Mm -hmm. anyway. Anyway, point being was that I changed my mind on it and I thought, well, he does want out. But then I thought, well, there isn't a likely scenario this year. And then when the Raiders, I heard that maybe he liked the Raiders when they extended car. Um, I thought, well, that kind of all of his, you know, uh, plausible options dried up for this year. So I thought, well, they'll just regroup and try again next year. Uh, Russ, Russ's camp in Seattle trying to oblige you to make the best of it for them. So I just didn't think anything would happen this year. Um, once we got to this point, sure. Like as in, as in a week ago, sure enough, it happened. So in that sense, it blindsided me. It didn't blindside me in general. Cause again, I thought this would happen next year, but uh, today definitely blindsided because I, because my mind was thinking when the Bears released that they were not going to retain Allen Robinson, I'm thinking, oh great, get Allen Robinson. That's where my head was. Um, but uh, Russ's head was in Denver, so yeah, um, I went through a similar thing with that whole tapping on. Uh, I think I had Tom Pelissero. I had uh, it was 30 minutes after I'd just been. Uh, doing grocery shopping as you guys would say shopping for food and uh i was just what about do you guys to... call it do you not call it grocery just... shopping well you could do it's just a bit it just sounds american you i call, think we just say the grub hunt or something pop... like that over well I, I popping to the shops you know the food popping shop. to the shops yeah you can pop to the shop um to get some bangers and in... okay no it wasn't bangers and mash um i was making kofta but the okay. the problem the problem was I, I sort of went on Twitter, sort of it turned out 30 minutes after the trade, uh, and I had like a, a ton of notifications. Someone had tagged me just saying yes, because clearly they were quite <laughs> excited about the news. And then I messaged you after seeing the Tom Pelissero and checking it wasn't a form of bread, uh, and it was actually the blue check mark. <laughs> And uh, I messaged you, Griffin, in all caps, and yeah, it's uh, it's crazy, yeah. isn't it? I like I said, it doesn't feel real, but I mean, we can get to the players that they've they've traded. So first, so the the trade, the impetus for the trade, or rather the catalyst. Do we think that Seattle wanted to trade him? Do we think that Russ wanted out? Do we think it was kind of like a combination? Well, yeah, so that that that's interesting. Uh, so the the Washington report came out, didn't it? And at the time, I, I mean, this has been going on so long now. I, I'm I'm sort of exhausted by it, and I I I sort of disregarded it. It was sort of fatigue. I was like 
mm, yeah. that's that's not that can't be legit um but then it's like why does that come out at this time it's such a weird time for it to come out sort of in and around the combines maybe people are talking then but i don't know that that was odd and then you sort of think R- R- Wilson, you know, you, you go back with hindsight and you think about how Wilson in press conferences didn't mention Pete Carroll at all. He was always leaving things slightly open. And the Seahawks tried to do that, but they, they sort of got cornered in a bit more at the combine, I think. And and Carroll uh, yeah. you know, said about not really wanting to trade him. But to me, this doesn't happen without either Russell saying, hey, I, I really want to go. <laughs> please let me go or I mean, Carroll's had a complete 180 because Pete's always right. been a massive believer in Russell he may or may not have nixed the trade last offseason when it's arguably a better time it was to... reported that he did yeah right and I mean that's good marketing right that's good PR sure. To, sure. to say it like the coach is the good guy the, the general manager is the evil one or yeah. not even evil he's just doing his job finding yeah. out options yeah. but now, now is is this kind of discussion of uh, how how into this Pete is compared to how how driven it is with Russell, like you said, right. and 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 I, I'm I'm not really sure where I f- fall on it. I I do lean towards it being more uh, Wilson driven and and just a breakdown in what he sort of wanted from the team ver- and his image versus what the team was going to was giving him in his eyes necessarily. Like yeah, I. I... De- breaking down like who wanted out or who wanted who gone, I think depends on what Russ, what each side was was wanting. So, if if Russ did want out, how do you parse that? Did he want out for football reasons? Did he just want out for organizational influence, or did he want out for mostly non-football reasons, like just wanting um, a, a, another city? Uh, if and if I- we're if I we're think trying to blend right it can't, it's never it's not going to be like 100 yeah. percent one thing absolutely these are yeah. all the factors of being a player in the league right Ab- absolutely and you know being kind of pro player in general it's russ's right to you know want to play where he wants to play especially with the player of his profile to exert your influence um but uh you know is it you know seattle not capitulating to him i don't know how you can measure that as an outsider but just by judging you know, comparing the rosters of Denver and Seattle, I don't see a huge discrepancy there. Um, Hackett is not necessarily a well-renowned offensive mind. He is catching, riding the coattails a little bit of the Shandy McVay tree now that he was in Green Bay for a little bit. Um, so at the same time, uh, you know, the the specific branch that Hackett comes from now, the Fleur, they don't pass a lot. So it's not like something as reductive as saying like, oh, Pete won't let Russ throw the ball. Um, well, his uh, his, his real successful spell was with um, Blake Bortles in Jacksonville, right? And then obviously Russ was a different level of quarterback and, and well, I guess the style could be kind of similar to Bortles. Some similarities. In, but... in the sense that I think if you were, you know, play action shots and, and running the football, but I don't think Russell's going to be signing up for that. He'll, he'll want to pass it a lot more. And yeah. Then, ha- um, I don't know, everyone runs the same concepts anyway. But... I know, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, so it's it's hard to tell who wanted out. I think that Russ probably was the one that was wanting out more than Seattle was wanting to get rid of him. I don't think he was particularly disenchanted with Seattle. I think he just wanted to change the pace. Perhaps Seattle... Um, you know, it's hard to want someone that doesn't necessarily want you. Probably that goes back and forth well, a little bit. There's been reports that uh, he, uh, Mike Sando, the Athletic, reported that uh, Russell Wilson and also Adam Jude of the Seattle Times, they they, they had similar reports saying how Russell wanted uh, Mahomes' money and to be paid $15 That's million dollars a year. And to be fair, and we don't want to sort of, completely go over what I've already said in much detail in previous episodes of Seattle Overload about how Wilson's play hasn't been as good as we'd have liked. But to be fair, I don't think Russell has uh, earned that kind of dollar. And obviously, quarterback contracts, you know, every time a co- new quarterback gets re-signed, if they're at that kind of franchise level to earn that long extension, they do reset the market. But I don't know if Russell's play has warranted that. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Seattle click. I think that it could be a deciding factor for Seattle in the sense that if Russell's airing grievances and he is still sort of needling in public, I think it was a bit more subtle uh, this time round, most most definitely compared to last off season. But maybe they were just like, okay, we're just not when you know there's only two more years left. Right. If you you don't want to be in a situation next year where this is probably the best deal they could have got. Right. from this point forward right like the supposedly washington offered a slightly better deal and seattle didn't want to trade him in conference i kind of disagree with that i think probably russell wilson didn't want to go to washington because i mean aside from them having a, a, a few promising pieces and a, and a decent nfl head coach why would you want to go to the schneider's uh, franchise like let's also just... yeah. i want to add here like we didn't hear about any sort of player uh, or any players that were potentially included in that Washington proposal. We just heard that there was an additional first round pick to yeah. what Denver offered. So we don't know if, if Washington was coming to the table with something that is comparable to Drew Locke and, and Shelby Harris and Noah Fant. And I think mm. Fant and Harris specifically, those two guys fit a couple of needs that they, that they had going into this off season. Obviously, Locke, you know, maybe they could have done a similar thing with, with Heineke, who is inarguably, in my opinion, a better quarterback than, than Locke, but that's not too much of a of a difference there. But, you know, I just, I don't think you were going to get Chase Young out of Washington. Like, you weren't going to get, I mean, at, at best, it was probably Deron Payne and something. But... You look at what they got from from Denver. That's uh, it's a pretty decent player haul on top of the pro- yeah. uh, on top of the picks. They so the, the Seattle the front office might have determined that a trade was inevitable, especially given one, do they want to pay him fifty million a year, and then secondly, does Seattle does Russ want to stay in Seattle when that happens? So if 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 it's inevitability that Russ leaves eventually. Um, then you probably have to make the trade when the value is highest. And it seemed like as you approach that contract year, the value is going to diminish. Um, last, As evidenced by Chicago support, supposedly offering three firsts last year, and now it's two firsts this year, granted two seconds too. But maybe next year it's going to be two firsts and one second, and then you know so on and so forth. Um, so maybe Seattle simply, ha- their hands were kind of tied and they had to make the move now. Um well, also, right, like, were, you know, were, I mean, this is a silly question, but if you look at Russell's, uh, and the Sea, you know, Russell is was the Seahawks, Ru- Russell is the, the quarterback, so inevitably the quarterback gets most of the attention, but the playoff record, that they, they, they struggled, there was, you know, one and done, they hadn't gone deep into the playoffs f- since... A while. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, really, 2014. Right. So I, they, they flirted and then they had that terrible game in Carolina, didn't they? Uh, but this whole thing of, like, were they going to win a Super Bowl of Russell Wilson? If we say he's not going to resign, were they going to win a Super Bowl in the next two years? And I don't know. And I got exasperated when we did uh, when we did talk about Russell Wilson in our offensive review of 2021, that podcast episode, because it's sort of like, well, we 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 keep talking about the same issues, right? And while you can change that with the defense, you can hire a whole new defensive staff. You can keep transitioning the scheme on the level that they have done last season. You, the quarterback is such an integral part of an offense, and the quarterback. Uh, in Wilson's case, clearly he, you know, he wants to be that star quarterback. He, which, which he has every right to be. We, you know, as we said, we're, we're fans of player empowerment. But if he wants to have this star role, how much can he realistically change when the game is an an, an offense and football is so uh, reliant on quarterback and the style of quarterback? And we've spoke, especially you, Griffin, about about how. Um, there is the Wilson offense and how that, that does impose limitations on what a play caller can do. And like any good play caller, you want to call um, for, for any quarterback you have, you want to call plays which match their strengths. But Wilson in particular uh, does impose very uh, obvious um, limitations and he does bring very clear apparent strengths. But 
if they weren't, you know, I, I say I grew exasperated because if they weren't going to, if they weren't going to improve and it felt like teams had worked Wilson out and he had athletically declined and so his improvisational ability, which was always elite, is actually dwindling slightly and edge rushes have, have smartened up to him, but also play callers are calling better coverages, better fronts, uh, better stuff to to combat him. And he still wants to be that star and he's and he wants to be paid and reset the market again, which every right to be that I'm sure Denver is just gonna do that with him if if things go well and he's a top ten quarterback for the whatever many year running of his career. And that is something we can say. He is he has been I think a top ten quarterback throughout his career in Seattle, which ain't bad. <laughs> like can I you'll take that from a yeah. For a whole, a whole a whole decade of never falling past that point is right. You know. But if Seattle wasn't actually really going to ever progress uh, beyond what they've been, like the, that twelve and four yeah. year, uh, the year before last, where they won the division and they were rolling and the defense looked good, but the offense as it it cooked for the first half of the year, and then they just couldn't. That that was them going. I, I said it at the time. That was them going all in with Russ. That yeah. that was them giving him everything that and everything that uh, Wilson advocates had wanted, and they couldn't adjust in the way that it, you know defenses were playing them. Right. And you can point a play calling, and Schottenheimer lost his job because whatever they tried didn't work. Right. And mm-hmm. really, it came down to the fact they couldn't run the ball well enough. Because if you think about it. The passing game required to combat how defenses were playing them with these uh, uh, safety staying over the top, the too high presentation of shells, was the intermediate uh, kind of areas that Wilson would not hit and, and just doesn't hit throughout, throughout his time unless he's got Jimmy Graham going down the seam. But even then, it's not that kind of five-step drop or from the gun, three-step drop, right. intermediate stuff, which you have spoke about a lot. So right. really... This is exciting because it's at least a change and change for the sake of change is silly, but this is a change which could lead to a progress that Seattle has always needed because you live by your quarterback and you die by your quarterback. And you always said to me, Griffin, however good Wilson is, right, he is good for a a bad Wilson, a game where you sort of have to overcome that, right? And if, you know, then if he's being paid... He didn't say this, but if he's being paid $50 million and your your whole roster is built around that quarterback, how do you then mm-hmm. adjust for that? Right. Yeah. Um, I, I think if you asked Pete, can you go far with Russ like in a vacuum any given year? I mean, he would think yes. Um, we know he would say yes because he would probably also say yes with that tier of quarterbacks, you know, like Cousins, Carr, Tannehill, especially Tannehill. Um, so, but I mean, I think, and I believe that Pete really believes that he can, if, if he thinks that he has the squad that, you know, that he can go far with. Um, so, and, and I, I believe that too. I think that you can go far with Russ, you know, in the right hypothetical. I mean, we have to remember that each year, even, you know, we're talking about really the last seven seasons since 2014, that's still only like seven games a minimum of playoff games and that's a really small sample size especially when it's one game each year and you know so much has to go right one thing going wrong etc um i mean each of those games you can fathom you know uh the ball bouncing one direction and how that might change the fortune of any one season and and hey you know you get past one game maybe that's all you need to kind of go all the way i mean look at the Bengals this past year right like they weren't a super bowl team but they got to the super bowl um so you definitely can go far with Russ, given all of his strengths and weaknesses, um, because he's—I mean, because those add up to the positives outweighing the negatives. But um, the negatives will crop up at certain times, and every quarterback has strengths and negatives. But his are so like he has such a unique sh- spread of strengths and weaknesses that the positives reveal themselves in such overt ways, and the negatives reveal themselves in such overt ways. And there are some like matchups where he literally can't do anything. I mean, the, the, even taking this past year, 
um, when the thumb finally started to look good, he had that good game against the Niners and his process seemed to be good. And then he had that dud against the, the Bears. And then he had another dud against the Rams. And then everybody thinking, is this the finger thing again? And then he bounced back again. And he had uh, good games in between them. And, and really, it's like, no, this is who Russ always has been. He just coincidentally has ran into a matchup problem r- right just a few weeks after when his thumb clearly wasn't 100%. Mm. So like that, that game could have happened had he not gotten injured. It would have been the exact same. He would have had good games before it. He would have had the same good games he had after it. And like, that's just Russ. Like, um, so yeah. So like you said, Seattle's in this place now where it is a little bit exciting because we've had this style of play of football for about a decade. And to me, Russ has been the same guy he's always been. I think he was just as good in 2020 as he was in 2012. I think that he has these eight game stretches of being incredible efficiency like the second half of 2015 and then the first half of 2020 which kind of similar to a lot of 2018 like the second half of 2018 and the first half of 2019 also was similar he has these stretches where he is incredibly efficient then he has stretches like the first half of 2015 or the second half of 2020 or even some parts games here and there in 2014 and then 2016 where he was kind of sinusoidal week to week so the the difference is I think it, the the lack of burst and athleticism that, Scram, that's yeah. the major difference. And then that's, I yeah. think the so the, obviously there's the schematic direction of the league, at, uh, learning that zone read isn't completely undefendable. Like there are ways to <laughs> to deal with that. Um, but I I think the the zone read thing obviously that that was an explosion sort of league wide of all the mobile quarterbacks. I think that's kind of overstated but with russ generally. And, and a part but, of it too right is when he got hurt in 2017. that's true he had a shoulder in, in yeah um, and then and it all, the obviously knee, his, he had the ankle he got his in ankle 20, stepped on yeah. by Tom good point too. yeah yeah yeah, yeah so, those, those are variables as well but the, the 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 way the schematic direction of the league's going now uh it uh, including seattle are these middle field open um how do we play tighter coverage, but with um, simple enough rules for the NFL roster turnover, um, and for you know to install uh, on defenses? So it's not like load and load and load and load of coverage tools, but it's maybe one or two coverage tools for uh, for a formation. And the way that's yeah. going with like Brandon Staley, and and I mean <laughs> he gets uh, probably a bit too much credit for that, but really Vic Fangio and his tree. Uh, Staley included in that, yeah, and and how the league is developing, and how teams in 2021, the teams who defended Seattle did exactly the formula for 2020. Right. So it'll be fascinating, f- as from a neutral perspective, from a from a a guy who likes football perspective. That's me, uh, <laughs> or girl, or person. But if you go and see Russell play, uh, you know. Patrick Graham defense, a uh, Brandon Staley defense, uh, Steve Spagnola defense, like he will do in the AFC West twice a year. That is going to be so interesting because Graham caused him fits with the Giants. Uh, Spags does all kinds of crazy stuff, um, and I, I stuff I think which will cause Russ issues too. Uh, but he he's big into his um like too high presentation, but pr- a touch more pressure, and then. Staley, obviously. So right. that that's going to be really interesting. But also, high, schematic... high-powered offenses in that division as well. Yeah, it'll just be low. and and to Russell, that will understandably, I, I'm sure, have appealed to him because he'll it'll become a shootout division, uh, in theory, where he can he can duel it out with some of the best quarterbacks and compete with them, try to prove that he's you know the better quarterback. But th- that that's some tough kind of defensive structures, and and from a Seattle perspective. Yeah the schematic direction they kind of saw what russ was against that and that was his a particular it was particularly accentuated against those styles of defenses where you you have these two high shells and they, they play disguise and they can camp on the 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 short while also uh playing a, a cloud or or a uh, a quarter quarter to the, to the deep vertical sideline shot and leaving the middle field open and they caused problems, and 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 we saw it wasn't just a one game thing. We saw it again and again. It became a theme, and so 
you know, even that Bears game, the the cover eight they were running, Russ was bad. And then you think about how Seattle had success down the stretch on offense. Really, Russ didn't have to be that good. He was he had some very efficient uh, kind of old school Russell games, but the run game was what completely uh, dominated. And I think the front office's decision will have been eased and perhaps they'll have been a bit overconfident in this move uh, and perhaps Pete as well because of how dominant the run game was down the stretch uh, and how Rashad Penny absolutely exploded um, obviously he's a free agent too but they right. sort of have to re-sign him now because whoever's the quarterback needs that kind of supporting cast even more so than, than Wilson would have Like, yeah. they have to be able to run the ball <laughs> They they'll regress somewhat in that area, right? But if they, we they can, need to you can go that. from yeah, you can go from you know having an outrageously efficient run game for eight games and just simply fall down to still you know top of the league theoretically. Um, so, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see just how much because they will regress. But the question is, how much will they regress? So that will be interesting to, to see, even from a neutral perspective. So. After making sense of the exodus of Wilson leaving, which, leaving, which we'll still be you know struggling with in the coming months, mm. the biggest question for Seattle right now is who do you replace? Who's going to be the next quarterback? Right. So um, obviously they got Drew Locke back in the draft, and I hope he never <laughs> has to play a meaningful snap. Why? Um, I don't like him. I mean, he has an arm, but he's not a good processor. So okay, if we're going from if 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 you can accept that Wilson is still a top tier quarterback, but still identify the weaknesses in his game that find are frustrating to watch, just from a from a, even a selfish standpoint, forget about value and what matters and stuff. It's not fun to watch him on tape. He's not a fun quarterback to watch. Um, that doesn't mean you don't accept that the things that he does well can still carry an offense. But he's not a fun for the same reasons. He's not a fun quarterback, or at least there's some overlap to me. There's some overlap with with Locke. Um, he has a good arm, though. He's tall. He'll attempt throws over the middle, but it doesn't mean he does it when he should. It doesn't mean he doesn't do it when he should. And it doesn't always mean he's accurate when he does do it. So he's got a big, strong arm, though. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Matt, I, if, I agree. If, if you've got real lock thoughts, go for it. But No, we, that's the, I, he, he seemed like a very uh, nice person. Uh, lad at the nice senior bowl man. when I was there, but but other than that, he uh, yeah, I agree with oh, you. Yeah, you had a little testament. fan moment with him, didn't you? No, or no, was that, no that was that was Baker. Yeah, I'm getting my yeah yeah. We're we're, we're getting our um senior bowl quarterbacks franchise quarterback, quarterback senior bowl white quarterbacks mixed up. Uh, okay, so obviously the big swing was last year, and they didn't take the swing, as in Justin Fields, Trey Lance, um, mm. even and that could have been. So much as like okay, Carol may have said nah, but also that could have been uh other the teams going, Do you know what? We'll actually take our chances with the draft or we're not gonna give you as good assets because we realise it's a good quarterback draft, you know? Right. Whereas this year the consensus and like, I guess we'll get to these guys, but the consensus appears to be that they're not now. as good. Ah, well, I Well I have, you've you've been on it. So obviously just really quick before we get into 2020 the 2021 options become interesting again because you've got cj stroud and bryce young who are the, i think stroud especially is like a bona fide number one guy but then this oh is he not yeah. eligible next year yeah well oh, just wait. think think what year it is it's 2022 right now so stroud and bryce young are eligible next year right yeah, it's As because you said 2021 earlier. Oh shit! Or yeah, oh, yeah, shoot, yeah. rather. Um, okay, sorry. I, I don't know what year I'm in. Um, so I don't know if they can hold out and put together a package to be in the top three to try to go to bat for one of those guys. So that leaves us with the 2022 draft prospects, which will rattle off, and veterans. Um, so little, little little insider info here. Okay, take it for what it's worth, grain of salt. Somebody, sources told me that they do indeed like Kirk Cousins and that there might be something there. So, But if you like Kirk Cousins, that means you also have to like Tannehill. We know Pete liked Tannehill in the draft process a decade ago. And 
you know, can they get Matt Ryan to restructure his deal? Old man Matt Ryan for a season or two would be awesome, in my opinion, with Seattle supporting cast, which is better than the Falcons, in my opinion. Well, anyway, that Kirk Cousins thing is interesting because Shane Waldron was the offensive quality control coach in Washington in 2016. Ah. And obviously there's the McVeigh link and he saw Cousins with McVeigh and it's all that weird stuff and uh, oh that that would be the problem with that is the problem with the Kirk thing is you've just said I've just said about how they weren't going to weren't willing to pay Russell the like 50 million dollar contract right yeah. Well, Kirk's they... contract's <laughs> even way worse. Like, what, yeah. what? Come on now. Like, they... and, and Kirk is not a consensus top 10 quarterback so... every year. <laughs> so, here, okay, here's the... So, Cousins had three years in Minnesota, right, so far? He just completed uh, his third year, or is it four? Uh, well, we, we can we can look that yeah, up. Yeah, how about... The time is all sort of blending... Yeah, so 2018 okay. to, so, to 2021, so it's, it's been... Up, up until this year, the Vikings have been two or two of the three, two of the three Kirk years. They've been top 10 of points per drive and they've been like neck and neck with Seattle, 19, 20, 21, like each year, like Seattle was like top 15 Vikings were like top 15. So Pete being Pete probably looks at it in a very general sense and says, well, we can create the circumstances that Minnesota created for him. We've got receiver talent. We've got, you know, a similar offensive minded offensive coordinator. We have, um, I don't think that Seattle's offensive line is that far behind Minnesota's. I know Minnesota fans weren't like huge on their offensive line, but I don't think they thought it was the worst thing ever. Um, and I'm in the minority in thinking that Seattle has a lot of promise on their offensive line and they just got to quote unquote stay healthy and all that good stuff. So I don't think Pete thinks that he can't go far with. Cousins, if the defense trends where he thinks it's trending, a lot of um, you know ifs and prayers and everything, but it's not the worst thing. The problem is really the contract. And no, I'm not gung ho on the idea of Kirk Cousins being the quarterback. I'm just saying it's not the worst thing in the world as an interim. He season. is he carries a forty five million dollar cap this year, <laughs> and All right. there's no he's thirty three, but you're not gonna like trade for him and then be like, hey, do you want to re-sign a terrible deal? I don't, so, I really don't think he's he he's like uh, he's sort of set his market, and I'm sure there's and, a, there'll and, be a team desperate enough to pay him. So the, similar, they're, maybe. they're 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 and, first. And by the way, if yeah, they uh, whoever trades for him is taking on thirty five million of that. There you go. So I don't. All right, so even if they do trade for an existing guy, they've got their first four four picks are for this year are 9, 40, 41, 76. Overall. Yeah, so the not the nine thing is major because when when that came out uh cuz it you know, they, it just come, gets reported as a first round pick and it's like, "Oh, what year is that for?" Right. The fact that Denver obviously struggled last year, nine overall, you can do like significant stuff with that. Right. So, here's the thing. If you don't want to part with if you don't want to package together either 40 or 41 in a later round pick for cousins or whatever because i don't think you need a first to get him right now um if you don't do that take all the players you want sign cam newton who's a free agent you'll have to give up a draft pick for him uh at worst i don't think he's going to get you worse results than say what mac jones was giving new england and you're running a scheme that fits Cam. I mean, Cam fits a lot of schemes. Um, I know a lot of people are sour on him because they don't like his medicals and stuff, but I mean, I don't think his tape was awful in New England. I really, really don't. And I think they just wanted Mac to start sooner than later. Um, I thought Cam looked better than Mac in preseason. I don't think Cam's busted. I don't think he's Pete Cam anymore. I don't think he's busted though. You can have him for a year and then you can package all your picks for CJ Stroud in the 2023 NFL draft, but that's me getting a little uh, too far into yeah. it. And um, I think, yeah, that, that the thing is, you have to give up picks if you're trying to find a veteran quarterback, though. Mm. Right now, you do. And Seattle, obviously, trading Russell, they took twenty six million dollars in dead money, which means uh, their current uh, projected cap space per spot rack is uh, just under thirty five million dollars for this year. But next yeah, year, it pretty much went unchanged when you factor in the. Uh, Fant and Harris and Locke contracts. 
I think they gained about seven hundred thousand in cash. Right, space. right, Great. and obviously we that's not factoring in that they just cut Bobby Wagner, and we'll talk about that at the end. True, True. Yeah. but um, twenty twenty three though their cap space, which does account for Wagner because his uh his deal was expiring then, the estimated cap space uh for the uh for all is a uh, hundred fifty two million dollars, which is just nuts. Which is what happens when you get rid of your franchise quarterback and you don't have any players signed really other than Jamal Adams. Uh, so, yeah, that's crazy. The thing I don't get with, uh, I mean, I, I don't know what to do with the quarterback situation. I'd, um, I'd try and stir up rumors that Lamar Jackson is, um, is really unhappy that Baltimore hasn't offered him a contract and then just trade for him. Because that's what Baltimore would do. Uh, no, they wouldn't do that. But um, yeah, it's difficult. I, I'm not sure about Cam. I, I I really do like Cam. I like his pocket presence. But that's a hard. Uh, that's but ev- everything's going to be a hard sell now. And this is why you don't see a franchise quarterback get traded. I know. Often. This, so th- this uh, is this, this, this is, is what, what they this is what they got to deal with right now. So the 2020. 20- two draft picks well before that the thing i don't understand is the rumors that they were trading for or trying to trade they were active for a sort of uh middle salary kind of wide receiver um which came out was that about now is that like uh, it made it made sense before the wilson trade like oh okay they're 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 going for it right oh yeah but with 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 what we know now that doesn't right. make any sense to me at well, all. Maybe that was maybe they weren't certain that they were trading rest. Uh, that could be a possibility. Like that was a thing that they and were so exploring the before weird the rest thing, trade. The weird thing about this whole deal is, like, you can't just how are you going to trade Russ on what chains? Like, it can't have been on a whim. Like, but then it could have just been the opportunity came to fruition versus so the, it not coming to fruition. What made the opportunity come to fruition really was this whole. Aaron Rodgers thing. True. Where That's true. Green Bay supposedly re-signed him. Then Rodgers said, I haven't signed a contract. Maybe mm-hmm. trying to get attention back from I mean the Russell Russ, Wilson news. R- I don't, I don't Russ get. was Denver's second choice. They wanted they wanted yeah. Rodgers. Who yeah, wouldn't. and like Jerry Judy tweeted out like some emoji or something saying how upset he was that Rogers wasn't coming basically. And then, <laughs> and then Russell was traded and he was like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Wait, um, we forgot to mention one name and we rattle off veterans. Do you know who I'm talking about? He just plays for a red team. He recently retired. Oh no. Yes. Oh, See, this, no. I, had, I was early on this one. I think, uh, Tom, Brady, for Tom Brady, man. he would really enjoy the Pacific Northwest. It's a beautiful part of the world. His family <laughs> would love the mountains. They could they could come on a volcano watch with you, Griffin. And uh, but listen, Tom, if you're listening, we've got some nice views up here. Um, that's <laughs> can you imagine that? He could play to his fifty happen, with but... that uh with that with that nice sea air. You know, it, I I will say. Trade for Tom Brady and then watch the their PFF protection grades all jump by like ten points. Just yeah, because the Bulls just bang, bang, um, bang, bang. Yeah. Well, I mean, if only if only because there's no opportunity for a negative play to occur, not because they look better, just because they don't look as bad as they otherwise would be if someone held the ball. Anyway, mm-hmm. Tom Brady's not happening. Secretly, I hope he does. I'm saying this so that you know I'm I'm hedging. Yeah, Tom Brady's not happening. Yeah. yeah. Reverse psychology. So, if they take a quarterback in the draft, do they go at nine? We also have to remember John Schneider might be feeling himself a little bit in the sense that I'm sure many teams were, but in the past they were connected to Mahomes. They almost took Mahomes and they Josh Allen. Really like Josh they, Allen yeah. and those guys. Well, Josh Allen went top five, didn't he? Okay, but Mahomes didn't. So maybe he's thinking, well, we really like the skill set of. Malik Willis and no one's going to take Willis in the first round, except now there's been like a PR blitz and he is going in the first round. So there may not be this guy, this talented guy that is raw that falls or talented guy that is unproven that falls into the mid rounds. So if they might, if they want a quarterback this draft, if they have a high valuation on Willis or Ritter, who I like Ritter actually, um, he's just not a normal year, like top prospect, but I like him in general. 
And I understand that Willis is talented. He just has a long ways to go. Do they take a guy at nine? In a way, that would be really disappointing. Like, I really want, like, a top-tier defensive prospect because there will be someone at nine, even if yeah. it's a guy that isn't in need. Um, but I don't know, is, man. This, this is where it, it gets so weird. That's, it is weird because they do, like, they do need a quarterback. And it, for them not to have – is it just going to be, like, uh, you know, Tavares Jackson 2011? Is it the year before Matt Flynn and Russell Wilson? Is it that kind of situation? Because yeah. nine, what we, what this, we... this draft, like you could get like Jordan Davis, you who blew up the combine and had great tape as well. You could get Source Gardner with thirty three and a half inch arms and a really good press corner. Right. And and still could work on some technique things. But do you do you even take George? I, I assume Thibodeau and Hutchinson will be long gone. Do you take George Karloftis, who was incredible? Right, and you you know you think about the 49ers every year. You know taking first round defense linemen, and, and we were always like, well, how you know we can't get like the Nick Bosa's because Seattle's not picking not there. But the now, top, yeah. yeah. So, so you that's you kinda, also do you do you do you trade back? Maybe draft someone like James right. Johnson yeah. or something, you know? Right. Like, do you absolutely stop that's a great more point. picks? Well, this with the strength of this draft, I mean, trading back from like one of the guys we mentioned, that might be a bit tougher. But with the strength of this draft being the trenches and it being quite deep, and also the fact that it seems round two slash round three is a real strong spot, trading back would be tempting because you could just load up your roster. Yeah, I mean, you've only got so many available. We, and, uh, and also, uh, like, if you if you if you wait until the second to take your quarterback, there's still guys that they might like there. With maybe Desmond Ritter, Ritter yeah. is still there in, in, right. in round two. Maybe Sam the, Powell is still there in round two. The thing with that is it's risky because it's like if you really like a guy, then just take him. But then remember Russell mm -hmm. Wilson; they support they really liked him and they waited it out and they got him in the mm -hmm. round three. I don't think uh, I don't think any of the quarterbacks we've just mentioned are going to go round three. I tweeted it's like a it's like a I, so I've watched three of them. I watched Ridder, I watched Corral, and I watched Willis uh, all very briefly. I spent the most time on Ridder, and I tweeted it's a, a draft of um, lunatics uh, because Ridder throws early like a lunatic. Like he he anticipates like very a nutter. He yeah. It's, it's actually really impressive. Like his processing is uh, really, really good stuff. Yeah, uh, just really quick, just to like, when I was watching Logan Hall for Houston against Cincinnati, I was like, oh, that's who Desmond Ritter is. Okay, because he was doing the exact same things that you were just saying. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, well, he, his anticipation, especially into the boundary, where it's like they're running snag into the boundary or curl flat, so it's quicker developing, or like even a seam in cover three. He's like reading out zone defenders, throwing it inside them and on, on, on to the inside of them. And then on the kind of deeper throws, he is thrown against defender leverage, bang, bang, bang. His problem is his wind-up is so elongated that especially on the deeper throws, the ball hangs and takes way too long to get there and so his deep ball uh accuracy is really lacking and that that's a problem and that's not a first round pick but then you know four five two second 40 yard dash at six foot three 211 pounds or whatever he weighed at the at the combine he and he is a genuine threat with his legs as well like i was watching smu in 2020 where he, he literally threw up um uh either side of really long touchdown runs uh he's a really um interesting player and someone you could mold but it's whether you can tighten up his release quicken it up and get him a bit more accurate and then yeah we're not talking about a guy at number nine overall but i do like him and he's he really is super he is intelligent he is the best prospect in the draft like the safest maybe prospect in the draft i understand maybe some people i mean quarterback you quarterback think? prospect Probably. I mean, I, some people might value Malik Willis's like ceiling more. I just think R Ritter's the, he's like the cleanest option. I know some people like Corral. Well, Cor Corral, but... Corral, so Corral runs like a lunatic. So uh, to keep with the lunatic theme, he, he's just straight up just trying to plow into guys and he did end up hurting his knee. Uh, and I just don't that you, you can't really do that in, in the NFL. He's not yeah. Cam. 
Uh, but also, he's not he, it's so he, it's really hard to evaluate him in that kind of offense because it is all kind of uh, predetermined shots. Uh, it does make the picture of Lane Kiffin, uh, sorry, of Monte Kiffin taken by Lane Kiffin and posted on Twitter and Pete Carroll seem a bit different uh, because <laughs> that was the only day Pete Carroll at the Combine uh, spent in, in the stands rather than in the Seahawks' like private box. And it yeah. ha- just happened to be when it was the quarterbacks and he was talking to sure. the Ole Miss head coach who coached Matt Corral. But then... Uh, yeah, I mean, they'll, they'd like love his grit. But again, if that was at number nine overall, I'd be quite concerned. He has really good at a really quick release and especially on like uh, the, all the kind of perimeter quick throws that they yeah. did. And he's obviously yeah. tough. He's overcome this adversity. He he, he is kind of fast, but his... Uh, yeah, whatever. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I'm. I'm really not well, sure. All right. About so, that. What, I mean, whatever, I need to watch more. This I, is Sam. I I need to watch more. But um, whatever they do at quarterback, as people, everyone tries to like guess what they'll do. I, we you can't look at the quarterbacks and go, oh, that would be a good fit for their offense because what their offense is, or what it has been, is not an offense that you're necessarily trying to replicate with another quarterback. It's, it was an offense specific to the guy that was handling the ball, you know, hundred percent of the snaps, you know, Russell Wilson. And he has, as we talked about, he has his deal. So the, whoever they're coming in, you're not looking to mirror Russell Wilson. So you're not like Pete doesn't covet a certain skill set. He loved what Wilson did as a rookie and he embraced it. And they, they, I mean, literally they, their offense was, we're going to do as much of the passing that Russ statistically does well in. And we're going to do as little of the passing that Russ statistically doesn't do as well. And that's going to be our offense. And that's what they've been every year. So whoever they bring in, they're not looking to like, you don't watch Seattle film and go oh, this, you know, Ritter fits this or Malik Willis fits that. You're, you know, that's not what's going to happen. It's just going to be whoever they like. Um, the big thing so- though, I think is they a hundred percent are going to want to build on the foundational run of under center, 11 or 12 personnel mid zone like that they Absolutely. found that that's their deal like so whatever and, the, so, and it's usually from even if it's 11 it's usually double wing presentation or right or a pair and we would even see that would be the base structure but we'd even see the base like concepts differ and bend a little bit like because no one you throw drift more you throw drift more you throw more of that bench route that out route right Mm-hmm. You know, you, you you do a little more of that cross sit. You do less of, you know, the big posts. And I'm I'm gonna miss seeing Russ launch moon balls, man. Like that's one of the coolest things in the NFL is Russ, Russ launching, you know, a, a 50 yard moon ball to Tyler Lockett on a deep over or a deep post or to you know DK Metcalf and you know yep. down the sideline. Like, yeah, we're we're not gonna see that anymore. Um, so uh, I think really the, the most interesting thing about this this isn't about this isn't a pro or anti-rust statement or anything. Just a general idea of whose offense is it. The the number one way we're going to, to, to see this is not going to be anything subjective. It's going to be when they go into gun, what are the splits like? Russ was 30% three-step, 20% five-step in gun. What is it going to look like with the next quarterback? If we see the 30% drop and the 20% climb, we're going to know it's just a quarterback thing. It's not like... Pete Carroll saying, you know, we love stick around here, but I actually hate uh sale drive for some reason. Like, no, that's, that's, that's not P- Pete ran that play at USC with Matt Liner and Charles and I almost said Charles Barkley, Matt Barkley. Um, or more, I'm sure he ran the, more, the under center version of it. But like the more I learn about Pete, he he's he's very much he'll just do whatever works like for the player that's been my and that that's always pete like what, so... what works for the player obviously there's some game plan stuff but it's what what works for the player in the most simple uh, well not simple but like fast it's not too difficult it's not too that, complex that's his fundamental belief on ev- in every single phase in the game why would it be any different for quarterback you know like you, so i don't know um, well, that doesn't, that doesn't mean he, why, that doesn't mean he executes that vision as a coach well, but that's his that's his philosophy. The, though the reason it's different for quarterback is because it makes it easier to explain said 
or avoid said quarterback's limitations. But that's right. uh, we'd have to deal with that anymore. Absolutely. And well then anymore. even if you point back and look at, well, USC ran the ball, that's college. And that was college 20 years ago when you could run for eight yards of carry. And simultaneously, if you compare their pass run rates at USC to other teams in the Pac-12 yeah, during and, that stretch, and, he's right up there. Like, And they had Reggie Bush the in college. Like, there wasn't like some He adapts to his personnel. Back. <laughs> in Seattle, he's adapted to his personnel every year. So whatever, man. Um, it's not, again, it's not even a... So, in, a so it's an just, interesting thing about... So that's a... This is a good topic because... At USC, Pete wasn't happy. I think it was 2002. He really wasn't happy with the offense. Uh, he 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 had Norm Chow as his offensive coordinator, but he got him really invested in the offense, and he contacted Gruden and devised a new offensive system based on the kind of like cutting edge concepts of that period, the kind of West Coast deal, which Gruden has sort of taken to another level. And they developed a new offense and et cetera, et cetera. The rest is history. Will Seattle, uh, with their new quarterback, will they will they look do some new stuff? Will they try and evolve it more? I don't know how you can't really re- reinvent the wheel. I, uh, and especially in the NFL now, with everyone running the same thing, shotgun being quite uh, predominant, and with Waldron already in place, I guess maybe not. But it's something to think about. Yeah, I mean, I think that Waldron would say any offense anybody should be running in terms of like top down you know thousand foot view is just what like the base structure is just what he did what he had the most success with when he was in la with Goff. Mm. assuming you don't have a freak show at quarterback like with the freak arm like stafford or russ or granted russ is different but you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um so he would think why would i not just build out of that and you know ideally have a better prospect than Goff, a better arm talent to work with but if you identify that you have a better arm talent than Goff, like Stafford, like McVay did with Stafford, well, he took the Goff offense and just played with the sliders a little bit. It's like, all right, we're going to do, we're going to take our huge five step sample and we're going to cut into that with more seven step sample because you're just getting greedier. The seven step concept uses more of the field and he has a quarterback that can get through the full progression and still get to the check down on time if nothing's there, et cetera. So, um, I think really we see something next year, regardless of who the quarterback is, we see something much more similar to um, what they did with Jared Jared Goff. I agree. uh, It'll be more of a training wheels approach, which with with any newcomer to uh, an offense, particularly a rookie, that makes total sense. And if the run game is going to pop, obviously it won't pop on the same level as 2021, but if it's going to pop, then okay. Uh, the 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 last quarterback, Malik Willis, he uh, his Duke creativity makes defenders look like lunatics. Uh, because he he is kind of I, I don't really like comparisons, but the way he sort of is almost like he's skating. Uh, the way he dukes defenders is sort of like Lamar Jackson is not quite that, but and then he's got this big arm. But really, I some of the stuff he turned down. I watched I've watched one game. Full disclosure, I've watched one game. But some of the stuff he turned down against Ole Miss, I was like, eh. and there's it, it, it a big arm there. But that seems like a, a big work in progress as well, which is why the, this isn't this top quarterback class. And I do need to watch more of the guys, but there isn't this clear – there one, there isn't a clear consensus what number one guy. There really is, but um, and often it's wrong. <laughs> but uh, also, uh, two – there isn't like this number. Not you got to draft this guy in the top ten. I don't really think you quarterbacks yeah. never you get pushed up because of the importance of the position. But yeah, but yeah. So I guess we should talk about. Just have to wait and see. We, we well, will. Real, the real quick, bef- before yeah. we get into Bobby and everything. Well, we should talk about. I think there's. Fan- a- oh, fan oh, yeah. and and Harris. Well, uh, real quick though, I I, I wanted to ask run. you guys. Yeah. There's there's obviously one other option that people are talking about, and I don't like the idea at all. I'm sure you guys share the same feeling, but obviously there's a quarterback down in Houston right now Uh-oh. who's going through some legal issues that a lot of people yeah. are talking about. So, how would you feel about that? And if what, if, you know, if do if you they, expect from that? 
if if they did that, I wouldn't watch them. I would probably be done. Yeah, I'd find um, another team or get in. Yeah. yeah, as much as I like Pete Cowell's defensive scheme, that would be a uh, that would be uh, pretty difficult. I would be disappointed in them because, like, you can't. Well, yeah, I would be disappointed for them for ethical, moral reasons first, and then secondly, and then secondly, like you'd have to be moronic from a even their own self interest in terms of trying to win games. He's not going to be. A, he's probably not going to be available to play next year. It's uh, also it's also like that's not what. So to, that that would just be this whole Russell Wilson move is exciting because of the the new possibilities it raises. It's sort of like a fresh change, and it's it was legacy defining for well, Everybody. not legacy defining, but legacy altering for um, Pete Carroll, uh, John Schneider, and Wilson himself. Everybody, like you said, mm. but it can be in a in a very positive way. And even if it doesn't work out for Pete Carroll and Schneider, it's a wow. They went they went out swinging like that. This is me- this is crazy what they've done. Like they they've gone for it again, and that they've stayed true to themselves. Yeah. To then sour it, it to that level with, with Watson would be just so it would just be really like is that is that how uh it would make me even more cynical about the world because is yeah. winning is winning that much to you uh, and and, uh, and like yeah. Griffin said he 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 will likely be suspended of some description yeah. obviously I don't know how much we can it, and like that variable shouldn't even enter the calculus anyway. It should just be the first point. No, but, there's just but, there's just the fact that he's accused by but you know, I would, I would all think, of these women. Right. I would think little of them and then I would also think that they're equally dumb. Like, what you, um whatever. Um let's see, let's hope that doesn't so happen. Ho- hopefully um, not. Um yeah. so the um, other two the other two players uh who are involved in this trade, Noah Fantz, former first round tight end. And Shelby Harris, the defensive lineman. The, uh, the, <laughs> thoughts. The irony is that Noah Fant was the type of skill set that I would have loved for Wilson to have had, as I like saying, in junction with DK and Tyler. La- alas, we got that kind of guy, but at the expense of Wilson and other things. Um, but he seems he's a he's a productive player, crazy athlete. He's huge. He's efficient. Um, and, from Iowa, so and, he, he knew and, how to block from the jump. There, yeah. And if you, assuming they don't trade Tyler Lockett, there was a rumor that they might trade him. Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, and Noah Fant is an awesome spread of skill sets. I mean, you can attack every part of the field. That's awesome. And you've also got Dwayne Eskridge, and the book is not written on him either. So, um, if they get a quarterback, and you all actually, also have this mysterious eight to ten million dollar receiver. Yeah. What is? Yeah. So th- that that's cool, sure. No fan. If you're gonna get players back, that's cool. Then um, he had well, oh, yeah, fa- fa- well, fan well, had ninety sixth percentile forty, ninety seventh percentile vertical jump, ninety fifth percentile board jump, ninety fifth percentile three cone, ninety first percentile uh, sixty yard shuttle. Like that's he's just not. He has he has three years of production of five hundred plus yards, mm-hmm. and he's twenty four. Yeah, and so, then he's 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 gonna put it together in the league. And usually rookie tight ends come out and struggle. And in a weird way, like we don't want to see Locke, but have giving Locke basically what was his favorite target in in Fant to help him acclimatize to Seattle is big. So yeah. I mean hopefully we don't see Locke, but it's something to factor into. Sure. So um... But you're right. Then, I hadn't thought of it like that. The the offense still has weapons, and I just don't get why yeah. they trade Tyler Lockett. The offense has, Lockett's contract is amazing. Is yeah. Um, and to me, that seems like something that I, you know, maybe Lockett's agent is trying to dig up interest because he's like, well, I don't want to have my receiver catching passes from Drew Lock. Maybe Russell Wilson's camp wants Lockett in Denver. I don't know. That that does not make yeah, sense possibly. for this year. And then, and then Seattle don't don't they eat a lot of money if they get rid of him this year? Yeah. yeah. So so not only would they have a dead cap hit of like fifteen million, they would also be charged five million dollars yeah. for trading him. As it doesn't make any sense. It only makes sense from the vein that hey, he's going to be thirty soon, and 
I don't know if you're trying to remake your, I don't know. It it doesn't make sense. Um, They don't need to get ahead of him aging. He's on a pretty good deal. So, and he finally, he just had a year where he didn't have that yearly middle of the season, you know, injury that he plays through, but diminishes his athleticism. He stayed pretty clean all year last year. So that's a good sign too. Um, After having one literally three years in a row, 18, 19 and 20 knee contusion, knee bruise, whatever it was each year. So, um, I think he sprained his ankle. One of them. Didn't he anyway. have a little bit of a hip thing this year? Yeah, a hip. Oh, maybe he did. But he, he, his 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 yards per like attempt didn't diminish or anything this year in yeah. the middle of the season. Right. So, all right. Um, who Shelby? I'm blanking on his first name. Shelby, Shelby Harris. Shelby Harris. Yeah, that's his first name. Um, uh, hey, he's a big end, and he gets pressure, and he's a good run defender. You can play him at three tech and four I four. 62290. That's pretty cool. Um, his pressure rate was so Sports Info Solutions lists him with the lists him with the defensive ends because he played defensive end in a 3-4, but I mean he's effectively he's a B gap player. He's a defensive tackle in essence. So his pressure rate was like nine point something. And then if you just look at the defensive tackle pressure rates on for SAS, there's like a cluster of like 10 guys between so like the top 10 is like 10 plus at 10 Mm. percent and then there's a cluster of guys 10 to 20 that are in the nine percent range and he was like 9.6 or something so he's literally in the 10 to 15 cluster he's 29 years old gets like five six sacks a year the last three years he gets pressure he's a good run defender like that's awesome that's that's pretty cool and he's a great team fit he might be the player who sees Al Woods not return because of his ability. He can play nose in a pinch. He can play three tech. He can play that big end role. He's really good mirror stepping uh, against the run in in like four eye or, I mean, even two eye, but more four eye kind of deal. And also just smacking the guard as the three tech. He's uh, real good at looping um, on stunts and has experience taking a nice tight path and he has that kind of uh experience in the the sort of bare fronts that seattle presumably is going to be continuing as their base but can also offer stuff on passing downs as one of the three techs so it's just a great piece to have added and yeah i think i mean woods might come back but uh i guess he'd come back but, yeah, the more um, the merrier. He's he's a very good player, and they, sh- they should try to bring him back. They should, they should. But anyway, it, it's a good, this is a good ad as well. Uh, it's not like a immediately flashy because it's Seattle. Begins, but... Like if we remember, like Seattle will be saying goodbye to someone that was playing significant snaps. Whether I don't think they would get rid of Collier just because they don't have to. They probably don't resign Green, and he played. I mean, a percentage of his snaps was he was technically the big end, right? He was a guy that could be a base Leo or a base big end. Ideally, he's neither. He was kind of a weird tweener mm. in hindsight. Um, but Shelby can eat into some of those snaps so they don't him bring him back. That allows a room for Woods as well. Maybe Green leaving pays for Woods. I don't know. Um, and then Shelby can replace some of the Green's production, and then you also I mean, can get the other edges out there in place of Green as well. His production... Like he had six sacks in 2021, 2.5 in 2020, and then six in 2019, then 1.5 in 2018, then 5.5 in 2017. So hopefully uh, he breaks that um, down year uh, yeah, in true. even numbers. But but the fact that he's getting these kind of like he's finishing the plays as well as well as the pressure percentage that you mentioned in that kind of uh, odd spacing as well, where it does kind of require. Uh, to do, to do some selfless work and then and then to eat and how you work the angles but that, that's just very very encouraging a, a good yeah good pick up. if you're gonna get two guys back in a trade like they're good players they actually they make the roster you know better in a vacuum so yeah cool um and so so seattle was not done on uh, march the 8th they also cut Bobby Wagner, which yeah. we, I mean, emotionally tumultuous. Not for us to dance on Wagner's grave. Uh, in fact, we we really like Bobby Wagner. This is a sad day, but we did see this coming. Uh, he, he, as we've said, uh, time and time again, he 
throughout the season, it was obvious his physical physical decline. You could see it on the field, on the tape, every single play. Really, he just his agility and burst had gone. And so when he made the Pro Bowl, oh, wait, was he an All Pro uh, yeah, this year? Yeah, yeah first team. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, good for him. I mean, yeah, good and for hopefully him. he gets good picked up and paid more money for that. But that that was kind of laughable because it was obvious people hadn't been watching. He he got high tackle numbers, but that that was sort of just clean up work and really uh, yeah. just he had to Does sort of count? he sort of had to guess things with his intelligence um, to actually stay stay like in games. Yeah, it frees up sixteen point six million in cap space. Um. That's a sick. pass rusher. That's a pass rusher. They also got draft picks. They got resources to get a pass rusher, man. Um, and then also, that obviously means what do they do at Mike? So, Cody Barton had two inspiring games to close the season, but it's only two games. Can you? And he's also going to be a free agent after this next year. So, I mean, wait and see with him. You know, give him a real chance in camp. But this is a really good middle linebacker draft too. So if there's a young guy that they really like, I mean, a lot of these guys can run. And then the guys that can't run are like really good in coverage anyway. Like Chad Muma, for example, he ran a four six. That's still pretty good, but he's like really advanced in coverage, for example. And you wrote, you did a great video breakdown on Tyndall. He has, he's underrated. It seemed in terms of his zone awareness. And then obviously his awesome traits. Um, yeah, when you said he was uh, he was getting dinged for some of his coverage stuff, that surprised me. I hadn't I hadn't, um, I hadn't realized that was the case. That um, yeah, yeah I, I, I because I hadn't really watched him uh, right. in college. I just watched his senior bowl and was like, wow, th- who is this guy? There, um, there will be there. There's a chance that one of these guys on day two will be like a future Pro Bowler. Um, there's just too many of them for one of them not to hit. So I don't know. Maybe Seattle takes one. They've got well, I think 40, they, 41, and 76 on day two. So, Well, as I said in my Tyndall video, I think they kind of have to because uh, BBK is coming off with bad knee injury. Barton's been inconsistent, obviously looks better off the ball. But re- realistically, like those guys, their contracts end in 2023, and now Wagner's gone. So you kind yeah. of need a, another one. And obviously, Jordan Brooks, there's not much difference between the, the Mike and the Will, but Brooks is thick enough and dense enough to play Mike uh, because the Mike still does get m- a bit more north-south kind of run through. Sure, yeah. And if they're going middle field open, he is that middle player not not playing out in space. Brooks can do both because he's a, a very talented linebacker. Lucky Seattle took him, really. And, uh, yeah. And, oh, are, any, you a, are you a Brooks fan? Uh, yeah, is it, I have been known to be. How how about you? He's he's okay, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so any any other business I, here or? I think we covered so, all the me. Yeah. So you mentioned um, pass rush, like that's that you can get a pass rusher now with that that mm. money that Bobby freed up. Mm. Now the question is, without Russell, attracting free agents to Seattle, and. What kind of caliber free agent do you think they would still go after considering where the roster is right now? Is Von Miller and Chandler Jones and Hassan Reddick and those guys that have been talked about ad nauseum in the build up to the soft season still on the table for you? Um yeah, that that's a good point. Uh when did so when did Chandler Jones who was the quarterback when Chandler Jones signed with Arizona? Was that he just got paid though? So like got, if you're gonna if you're gonna great, pay yeah. if you're gonna pay pay someone then I don't think it matters. I think it was Palmer, but, right? Because he got traded there. Was it New still England. Palmer? Yeah. Okay. And oh, obviously, got traded. Yeah. Seattle does have a good reputation around the league for their culture. They don't like you can sort of sneer at that, but that is a thing. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I I think it is a bit less attractive. Then again, it kind of works in the other way that the defense has like a lot of pieces. Uh, as well. They have to re-sign Conde Diggs and DJ Reed. That may get more difficult too without the that kind of yeah. franchise obvious quarterback. But if they can get that done, and they they have to, they really really have to, and they haven't used the franchise tag on either of them. Uh, yeah. Diggs in particular could have merited that, but they they did, even though he did break his leg. So, but anyway, they they have to get those guys back, and if they do, 
then the defense has real pieces. Uh, and so if you're a pass rusher and you want to, you're coming on board and, and, and Pete Carroll, he sort of markets it to you as, Hey, we're going to try. We had a great defense here. We're going to try and create a new defense. We've got this new kind of scheme going on. We, even though it's not that new, they had, they had signs of it, but that's irrelevant. But anyway, the, the, they're trying to continue it and they're trying to build upon it. They've got all these new coaches come aboard we'll, we'll build another great defense and we're going to run the the football and we're going to this is the new seattle the new is the old etc cetera, etc cetera. i right. think that's a, that's a good pitch for a, a defensive player i think that's good enough I, I i don't really know that's just my opinion yeah there's going to be there's going to be also so many of them at a certain point they're not going to be able to like you know have all the teams available to them and they'll get to pick the best option. I mean, there's going to be so many guys are getting cap cut too. So Darius Smith, Daniel Hunter might be, you know, there's tier two guys like Randy Gregory who are productive and efficient, but they're not looking at the, you know, the mega millions for their, you know, relative to their age and stuff. Um, so yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to see. Here's the thought. Are Vaughn Miller and Shelby Harris tight? Are they friends? Does that, having uh, yeah that, I mean, that have any the, bearing the, the on funny anything? thing about von miller as well is broncos fans are now like hey we can get von back so <laughs> that, which yeah. is good for them if they can but the, um, the one thing to bear in mind is the the legal tampering date which is the 16th of march so the sort of kind of it's the end of the league year right so that's yeah. when i think seattle may announce a few more things more things may happen yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Scary times. Kind of exciting. Kind of scary. I just it's weird. It's to... surreal, right? Like, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Really surreal. hard to process. It was. It was super surreal when back in twenty, I guess eighteen, when they cut Sherm and traded Bennett. It just felt like, oh, okay, things are changing. You know, like that was. I couldn't wrap my head around Sherman not being on the team because he kind of defined the Seahawks for a while. Mm-hmm. So this is yet another huge seismic shift the only the only you know continuity is pete carroll john schneider and some guys in the um in the front office i mean maybe some of the position coaches like john glenn's been around since 2013 i think or 14. i don't think i mean who else who else in the football personnel side of it has been there since 2013. there's like maybe five to seven guys Mm. I guess Carl Smith Taters is back. You know, it's, it's yeah. Dave it's, Canales. I don't know how long he's actually been here. Yeah. But... The what about uh, John Glenn? I uh, did I say John Glenn? Maybe, yeah, yeah. I, maybe. Yeah, sorry, I, I just wasn't listening. Oh, that's rude of me. But no, that's fine. The, the, re- the reason I wasn't listening is um, the it seems also like because they have these two first round picks next year, they can obviously and. Two second round picks, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They next have two seconds, well. they have two first. And yeah, they can use that to package up. They can move. They can basically move around the draft however they please if there's someone they want. Uh, it, so. so okay, I mean, that is, I know we're not to o- open up the can of worms that we already opened, but they may very well have a plan A and a plan B for this year, and that plan A could be if so let's say they like Desmond Ritter at whatever number at whatever pick, and say he's not there, then plan B is either sign a quarterback like uh, Cam Newton or trade for a guy that does not take a lot to require. Yeah. And then go into 2023 with the plan to package those picks for someone. Well, that's, um, that's, that's how it, that's how it works. So like, you yeah, can't, yeah, I mean, you can't in the NFL, you can't plan, plan, you can't have just one plan. I, I mean, invented if you... having a backup plan just now. Wow, that's but podcast. like, for instance, Bob Condotta, the, the Seattle times, they did a, uh, one of these Twitter spaces things, which, which they're quite fun, aren't they? And he was saying how he thinks Seattle probably has about, you know, four options and they have like the best case thing, but they, they sort of know they have in mind what the worst case scenario is. And they were happy enough for that to take place and move Russell, you know? Yeah. Which I think is correct. Uh, the the other thing is. We, and the we worst said, case, well, right, is, is Drew Locke. Well, right. Right, and and this or is the Gino. thing. Or Gino. On, I think the worst We're, case. We is, haven't talked about Gino yet. Well, Gino, oh, well, 
Gino might be better than Drew Locke. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, mean, the, I think the, he is. Yeah, but, but the, the the other thing is they might. I think they might uh, try and trade Drew Locke. I don't know what you'd get for him, but if they're just, yeah, I, I, why wouldn't you try and trade him? He's clearly sure. not. Yeah, I think they'll try and sniff around at, with the. At the very least, that. his arm should elicit something. I mean, if yeah. they trade for another quarterback, he's probably involved in that package. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah, true. exactly. Yeah, he's yeah. sort of just going to get dumped on teams. <laughs> he he could get caught in a, a quarterback uh, Would, trade uh, cycle. Uh, What's his face? Arthur Smith won a, a young quarterback. He he says, I did it with Tannehill. I can do it with Drew Locke. What's oh, do they restructure? Well, well, so well. if you trade for Matt Ryan, if you restructure it, doesn't just the cap figures change for both teams? You no longer have to worry about. The, I'm totally ignorant. Now, Matt Ryan has to agree to it because that that's a yeah. lot of money he's looking but, at. But it would be just straight up if they traded for him, no restructure. Uh, the Seahawks, hypothetically, if they traded for Matt Ryan, they would only take on eight point one million dollars in twenty twenty two, and then twenty eight in twenty twenty three, per over the cap. Matt Ryan would be amazing. His his arm is falling off, but he's still a good quarterback, though, and, and he loves like, tight ends. And and like price no point fair. wise, I I think that's how you make it you don't splurge well i don't i don't know what I'm talking have, about. i'd I imagine think, you're not splurging all your assets and you're not paying him 50 million dollars a year i think and so that Ryan's it's, still, it's yeah, like a bridge but, but a bridge with more upside than a typical bridge quarterback you if know? if the, yeah the main goal has to be if they have to find a bridge that is actually has a high floor and it, that bridge can't cost them too much because it's only a bridge. It's not the other side. So like Matt Ryan, all you, could go, you could go 12 and five. Matt Ryan still has still. 32 games in him minimum of being like the biggest piece of the pie for why a roster goes to the playoffs. I mean, yeah. He's and still then a playoff quarterback. You, you build up this defense and you, I mean, you I think he's better than Kirk cousins, for example. Uh, so. Oh, hun- yeah. You so see, you add the, and especially when you factor in price, and then you add in the pass rush, and and a great defense, and and the run game still good. Well, then that's a team. And then you know, throw throw in Calvin Ridley with the Ryan trade, and then you get him next year, <laughs> or next next year, right? And then, yes. Can you imagine DK Metcalf, Calvin Ridley, Noah Fant, and Tyler? Wait, Lockett, so Matt so Ryan. Ridley was in the last year of his deal this year. So does that just move over to twenty twenty three? Does it become th- a free th- agent? Yeah, I think so. Man, he really that's screwed wild. himself. Mm. That's anyway, future Seahawk Calvin Ridley. That concludes our podcast. Yep, there we go. That's so, we started with Russell Wilson. We ended with Calvin Ridley on the Seahawks. Thank hey, you. You know, who's, you know who's the second tier free agent receiver? Juju Smith Schuster. TikToks for days, boys. That's, that's a thought. Mm. That's a thought. Yeah. yeah, that's a thought. That is a thought indeed. And with that, th- thank you everyone for watching slash listening please subscribe to my youtube but more importantly follow c mike spin move driffin follow ty dane gonzalez our producer at dane and then well you can see on the screen i don't know how to to work my way around that i mean i could just read the letters out but this is it's 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 gonzalez without the vowels it's g-n-z-l-z oh or z -Z. oh is z not a vowel no it's not what what? <laughs> oh, you guys have different vowels. We speak Is that the same a vowel language, in, but... in the UK. What? Vowel. A E I O U. And sometimes Y. Is okay. L a vowel? Matthew. Matthew. <laughs> Are I you guess, for real right now? I guess it's just um. Okay. That there transatlantic are vowels and thing. consonants. Okay. This. All right. Go eat your bangers and mash. And reload yep. your brain and get some okay. sleep. Okay. Okay. Yep. Sleep sounds good. All right. right Calvin well, Ridley. Thank you, everyone. Calvin and uh, yeah, we appreciate you. And uh, yeah, and lots Calvin more Ridley. Seahawks content coming for for the foreseeable future. Seattle Overload will probably be here. So.